Greetings today in the great name of Jesus. So glad to be here with you on Church of the Air with Sister Bonnie Gurley. It's a pleasure. My name is Pastor Walter Turner. I'm from Faith in Christ Church in Fort Payne, Alabama. And it is an honor to have each and every one of you all tuning in. Uh, we want to bless you today through the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is life. <clears throat> when Jesus even began to tell Satan, he said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I love the fact that God has assigned us to carry his word because God's word is an eternal thing. And he's leaving us in the earth with guidance and with direction because he's given us his word. And I'm so grateful today that we can minister to you. And it's my hope and my desire that the Lord would touch you and minister to your spirit by the word of God. If you're sick in your body, have faith in God. If you're lost, I encourage you to come to know the God that has created everything that you see and everything that exists. The God that made you is well able to save your soul today. There are no good things that he will withhold from us as long as we commit our lives unto serving the Lord. Uh, we're going to take a little time. I always like to take time out to pray before I go into the Word of God. So we're going to take a few moments to go into prayer today. Father, we honor you and we thank you for being our God and thank you, Jesus, for being real. Thank you for not only coming into this world, but for your death and for your resurrection and for the words that you spoke when you said, it is finished. Lord, all you ask us to do is to have faith in what you have done. For you have redeemed us from darkness and brought us into light. And Lord, we thank you for the path of righteousness. We thank you for the truth that you've left in this earth. Thank you for the precious blood that you've shed, that now we are clean through and by the word and by the blood of Christ that's been applied to our lives. Lord, we pray that this, this service today may meet the needs of the people, Lord, no matter what it is. And God, that the word would become spirit and life. Minister into the hearts of the people today that they have ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a spirit of obedience. We thank you, God, because we are leaning and depending upon you as we go forth to be your disciples, Lord, as we go forth to fulfill your will, anoint us with thine anointing, Lord. That that came down from heaven, touch us with thy spirit today. And I pray, God, that you would give us the words to say. Let me not speak anything that I should not say. But let every word that I speak be under the ordinance of the Holy Ghost. Let the Spirit of Christ speak through me today. And you touch lives and we'll give you praise and give you honor and give you glory for everything that is done. Remember our nation, Lord. Don't want to forget our nation. Remember our nation and visit this nation. For you said if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek your face, Lord, how that we would hear from heaven and you would forgive our sins and heal our lands. We are dependent upon you today, Jesus, to do just what your word said. And thank you that you are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. But when you spoke it, you perform your word, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I pray that that prayer touch you today and you're blessed behind it and you feel more encouraged to go on with the Lord. I'd like to minister to you today concerning, and the books were open. You know, when we go to reading in God's Word and we realize that there is not a thing that we do in this life that is not being recorded, and it's our prayer and our desire, it's, it's such a great thing when you become aware of what is going on. So many people in our life, they think that they can get by and they can do things contrary to the Word of God, so many think that they can do things and it not be known by anybody. But we realize that God himself realizes and knows the intention of every heart. He knows the thoughts that are going through our minds, every deed that we've ever done. And I love that fact that there is an all-seeing eye. You know why I love that fact? In order for you to fear God and to understand that there is a power that is greater than any other power. There is one that we will give an account to of what we have done. And I want to be able to stand before the Lord and to hear his voice say, well done. 
Oh, hallelujah. There's nothing like God himself, Jesus, telling you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. To think that God would allow us or allot us amount of time upon this earth to where we can prepare for heaven. Everything is not going to heaven. Only the pure in heart are going to see God. And I love the fact that knowing his word, it keeps me constantly working on myself because I want to be pure in heart. I want to be right when it comes to God. It doesn't matter what people would think or even consider about me. It's what God thinks. Realizing that I'm not out to please man. I'm not out to satisfy the flesh. But I'm out to please the one that had called me. The one that knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And today as we go to the Word of God, I pray you have your Bibles. I love the King James Version of the Bible because that's the one that saved me. I heard the Word one day and it convicted my heart and it brought me into the knowledge of Christ. But we're going all the way back to the book of Exodus. And here in the book of Exodus and out of chapter 32, we're going to talk about God's book a little bit. And then I'm going to move on over. But out of this I find written here in the 31st verse. And the word says, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O thy people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. He said, Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin, and he paused and he said, And if not, blot me out. He said, I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. God has been recording from the beginning. To know the history of the Bible just a little bit and to understand that the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. Moses was not the first man that God made. He wasn't there in the beginning. Many years had passed before God began to deal with Moses and God gave him the law. Now when God began to deal with Moses and he began to give him the history of the Bible, Moses began to write down what God had did. What we read today is not everything that even God did. What we have out of these 66 books of the Bible, ain't it good to know that this is not all of the knowledge that our God has? It's not all of the miracles, not all of the signs, not all of the wonders, not all of the mercies that God has shown to man, but it's good to know that God has given us a history to follow and to know that the power of God has existed from the beginning. And the Lord wrote these names down. And the Bible teaches us about there being a book of life. I'll get to that in just a minute. But here Moses recognized that God had a book. A book that was filled with either your name or it wasn't. And God let it be known here. He was telling Moses, I've raised you up to be a leader. I've raised you up to be a deliverer. And it's not your fault that the people have sinned, but they disobeyed the word of God. They didn't sin against Moses, but they sinned against God. But Moses loved the people of God so much, he began to tell the Lord, he said, Lord, have mercy upon them, forgive them of their sins. He said, but don't take their names out of the book of life. He said, if you blot theirs out, blot mine out as well. Now that's a love right there when you will stand in the gap. Being ministers, being children of God, you know what we have to do? We have to stand in the gap sometime. We have to pray. We, this is why we pray for our nation. <clears throat> this is why we pray for the lost. This is why we pray for those that are backslidden, that God himself would have mercy and do a restoring in their lives, that they might come aware again to know the Lord and to fear God and to keep his word. But the Lord let it be known. He said, now Moses, I'm not going to blot your name out. He said, but those that have sinned against me, I will blot their name out of the book. There is life when God records your name. And the good part about it is that God has known those that are his from the beginning. It's not something that the Lord just randomly chose us. <clears throat> Even though we've been predestinated, elected by God, and as I said previously, God foreknew us before he formed us in our mother's womb. I love the fact that we serve an all-knowing God. 
It is good to know that it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you came from. It's where you're going that matters. Uh, and I'm so glad that we're on a destination that is going to take us to a place that the God of heaven has prepared for his people. Then yet we will not be separated anymore, but we'll be in the presence of God himself. And we're going to see God as he is. Oh, hallelujah, to look upon that face. I hear so many people say, I want to get to heaven and I want to see my loved ones that have gone on. But I find in the word of God, the word God wants us to have him on our heart and on our mind more than anything else. And to be able to come unto him and to find him. Thank you so much. And to know that when we get to heaven, the first one I want to see is Jesus. I want to be able to look face to face upon the one that died in my behalf. To think that he would come all the way from heaven down to be a redeemer of our souls. These earthly houses are going back to the dust of the earth. But the part that God put in us that is eternal, which is our soul, he said every soul is his, but the soul that sent him shall die. And when he came, he came to give us life today. And I'm so grateful that he gave us life. I'm going to read a little bit more here. Out of John chapter 21. And John began to write this concerning Jesus. He said in verse 24, he said, This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. John was witnessing of himself because he walked with Jesus. He was called by God, and John was the loved disciple. In verse 25, John said this, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one. He said, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. To think that Jesus did so much more than what we read about. And he said, now, if everything that he did in that short term of ministry, for 33, for three and a half years he ministered, but he did so many things, John said, if everything was recorded, said the world could not contain the books. But you know where it is recorded? It's recorded in heaven. Everything that is done in this earth is being recorded in heaven today. There is a library in heaven. There are books of life. That, there is a book of life there. Oh, everything that is needed to be known about here on the earth, that when men and women begin to stand before God, it will be an undeniable truth. In our day and time, we have recordings that are put on tapes. They're recorded on discs. But in heaven, the Bible said it is written because God's word is never going to change. Man's system might change, but God has scribes in heaven. His angels have written it down and are continually writing down everything that goes on. I love this fact. The world could not contain the books. John said if, if all that was recorded, he said we would have been writing constantly because he did so many wonders. He did so many miracles. But it doesn't take me being convinced by another book. All as long as I have is the Word of God. I have the Bible, the 66 books that let me know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I was not there to see him do a miracle, but I know he's real today. And as I I stand before you. I am a miracle because my soul has been saved. Because I've been born again. My sins have been remitted. And now my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. It's nothing like knowing that you are assured that you're going to heaven if your name is written there. As we go over to Revelations, in the last book that I'm going to read is the book that I'm going to finish ministering to you from is the 20th chapter of the book of Revelations. God is so good to give us all of the Word. Man, I, I love the Word so much. Seemingly as I've grown to read it and to gain some experience and some knowledge from the Word of God, I can read things over and over and every time seem like there's an enlightenment that God brings. God can show us depths of the Word of God. 
when you're young, you may not fully comprehend what all a particular scripture has in it. But as you become seasoned in God and you begin to read the word and the Lord has pulled back every scale from your eyes and spiritually you start reading the word and you find where the scriptures, they're not talking about somebody else or to somebody else, but God is speaking to you out of his word today. Oh, hallelujah. It encourages us. Read the word of God. Know what the word says. That way you won't follow anybody that is out of the context of the word of God. But as we begin to read out of verse 12, as John being the revelator at that time and was on the Isle of Patmos, and God showed him things which were, things which were to come, things which were past, and he told John to write. John became a scribe and began to write. And here in the 12th verse, John said, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and he said, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. My question today to you is, how are your works going to measure up to your name being written in God's book? The reason I ask that is because God has given us a book to begin with. Any good student is one that knows that I have to study. How can I know the nature of God? How can I know the will of God for my life? How can I know the voice of God if I don't read His Word? But because when it took His Word to save me, it's going to take His Word to keep me. It's His Word that's going to preserve me in this journey of life. And here John said, I saw a day come which is the day of judgment to where everybody was being judged by what had already been recorded. Or there will not be anyone that climbs up any other way that will be able to get into the kingdom of God. Except you come through the door that leads to the sheepfold, that's the only way that you can say, I know Jesus. Because when God begins to convict the heart and He begins to deal with your soul and let you know you're not in the will of God, you're not in the order of God, you have sin in your life. And sin is the thing that separates men and women from God. But when we get in the will of God and He tells us to repent, we find that we can ask of the Lord for His mercy. We can ask of God for forgiveness. And the Bible teaches us that He's quick and just to forgive us of our sins. Or you might, you might think that I'm all right with God, but there might be some details in your life that you're omitting. This is why the Bible said, judge yourself. Check yourself out to see whether you be in the faith of God. And here John saw everybody standing before God. Time will not matter on that day. Time will be of no essence and men, I hear people that will get up and say, well, I'm going to ask God this, and I'm going to tell God that. But on that day, it's going to be a silent space to where men won't say anything because God is in control. And John saw, he saw everyone standing before God. He said they stood before God. To think in that moment when you stand before God, you may not imagine it, but begin to ponder it in your mind as you stand before God. What are you going to hear God say? Is the life that you're living according to the will of God? Are you measuring up to the Word? Have you put the Word on? Have you sanctified Christ Jesus in your heart? Have, are you living according to God's Word today? He said they stood before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And he said, and the dead were judged out of those books which were written in the books according to their works. Why would he say the dead? He, because we find when Jesus shall return again, he said, everyone shall not die. He said, but the dead are going to be raised first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So here it lets us know everybody will not go the way of the grave. But all that have died, all that have gone the way of the grave, everybody is going to stand before the Lord and give an account. And they were judged out of that book. And he said, out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. Or do you live a Christian life every day that you live? 
24-7 do you have a mind that, and, a, and a conscience and an awareness that God is watching you? Or are you living a Christian life that you can be a Christian on Sunday morning, on Saturday or whatever day you go to church, putting on a suit and a dress and dressing up to look like a Christian doesn't make you a Christian. But the God that we serve, He does not judge by the exterior, but He judges according to the heart. And He knows where the heart is. If the heart is right before God, everything in us is going to line up with the Word of God. When we have truly been converted and our hearts are pure before God, we will live according to His will. Standing before God on that day are going to be people that have been so foolish to say that there is no God. But the reality of it, when they stand before the true and the living God, and they realize that the things that I was told, that I was wrong, that God does exist, now I have to give an account of it. On that day of judgment, there is no repentance. You cannot be saved on that day, for time shall be no more. But while you have the opportunity, while you have the breath and life in your body and the awareness to say, God, make yourself real to me. I'd rather be an individual to say, God, make yourself real to me. Make yourself real to me. Thomas was a believer. Thomas was one that knew he had walked with the Lord. But after Jesus had died, Thomas wasn't sure whether he still had kept this promise or not. And he said, except that I, can run my hand into his side, except that I can stick my finger into his hands. He said, I won't believe. Now, a lot of people might say he was an old doubter. Thomas wanted proof. Sometimes it might take proof, but you can get the proof on the earth. But don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till that day arrives and you can't find no proof that God is real. Because if you really want to know, God will prove himself to you. And when the Lord came and appeared to the disciples and he said, peace be unto you. And he began to tell Thomas as he ministered to him. He said, Thomas, reach hither your hand. He said, but you do it in faith. And he said, you thrust it into my side. And he said, reach hither your finger, stick it through the holes in my hand. Thomas did these things and he fell on his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. God had made him a believer once again. God will take doubt, unbelief out of your life, and he will convict you and make you know, I'm real. God has all the evidence in this world to let us know that he's real. It doesn't take him doing another miracle for me to be convinced and to know that my God liveth. I know people observe Easter and they act as though he's still in the tomb, but that was years ago. He's a resurrected Savior today. When Christmas comes around, they act like he's still in the manger. Oh, hallelujah. He came out of that manger and he fulfilled the will of God. Hallelujah. I thank God that he's converted me to cause me to know that there is a work that I must do. We're going to be judged according to our works. If our works are not favorable, I didn't say you'd be saved because of your works. I know that faith without works is dead. But if you believe that God is real, you want to work while it's day. Because night is coming when no man can work. It's time to labor for the Lord. People perceive and in their mind are seeking after the things of this life. There is not one individual that came into this world with anything. We were not born with anything. We came into this world naked. And when we leave this world, we're going to leave this world with nothing. It doesn't matter what you possess, how much you possess. That's not going to save you on that day. I had a precious mother that died, and my mom would get up and testify. She said, I never saw a hearse that had a U-Haul behind it. She said, because everything that is in this earth is going to be left behind. On that day when God's children stand before him, we're going to stand before for him in a glorified body. We're going to leave that old earthen house behind and we're going to be made like unto him. We're going to see him as he is. We're going to do those things that he did. And there is nothing but a purity and a peace. No more contending with the devil. Hallelujah. No more trials. No more tests. No more sickness. No more pain. 
Hallelujah. We're going to stand before the Lord, inherit eternal life because he lives in us. Hallelujah to know him today and to labor for him. God, whatever we got to go through, it'll be worth it in that time and in that hour. No matter what you're facing right now, know that if your name is written above, that's all that matters, Lord, my name is written above. All of us might have a, a different last name, but if you've been washed in the blood, you've been baptized in that name of Jesus, that name that has power over all the powers of the enemy, that name that in that day the bride is going to be prepared to meet the Lord. Right now we're washing our robes white in the blood. Right now we're coming through trials and tribulation. John said, I saw a number that no man could number. Hallelujah. It ain't just a few of us. God has an army. God got a royal priesthood. God has a chosen generation. We are God's children today. Hallelujah. As long as I can hear him call me and tell me, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. Now I can make you rule over many. Hallelujah. Let me be faithful. Whatever you're called to do, you might not be a preacher. Be faithful in your prayer life. Be faithful in taking up your cross and following Jesus. Be faithful in loving the Lord, and that way you can love one another. Because to know the children of God, he said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, because you have love one for another. Hallelujah. We face adversity, hatred, misunderstanding sometime in this life, but it's so good to know that I'm loved by God. Hallelujah. I'm loved by God. Man, that's an assurity in it, knowing that I'm loved by the Master. I thank Him so much for being real to me. Thank God for putting me in the midst of people that love God. It's good. If, I, if you think about this, if you were on this journey by yourself through this earth, we would be some miserable people. But what makes it so good is to be able to go other places and to find other people, family members that love God. It ain't just about going to heaven to experience the love of God. But even right down here, you can experience. When you get in the midst of the saints of God, you know that the spirit they have is real. I don't know you. I may not know you, but when I meet you, that spirit that is within me, it connects and it agrees with the spirit that is in you because we are children of the Most High God today. I love him so much, and I, I appreciate him just giving me an, a call in my life that I might be able to touch others' lives and to encourage God's people Continue doing good. The Bible said, be not weary in well-doing. He said, but in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. Understand what it is to endure. That means to stay a hold to the master. Keep your hand to the plow. He said, if you start looking back, he said, you ain't fit for the kingdom. But see, God didn't call us to look back. What we got to look back for? Everything that we need is before us. In the word of God, Paul said, I'm forgetting the things of which are behind. He said, but I press towards the prize of the mark of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing towards the kingdom today. Let us stay in that press. I want you to know that we love you. Thank you for tuning in. And I thank God for my sister Gurley for allowing us to come and to minister to you by means of television today. Pray for us and know in turn that we are praying for you.